Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, rondels. Uh, what is a rondel, I hear you ask? Well, if you're asking that, you're in the right place because we thought it would, it would be a good thing for people to hear about because rondels are a sort of um, under, under, underknown, undervalued, huge aspect of the whole of the Neolithic in Central Europe. Welcome to the Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge podcast. Michael here. Yeah, Rupert here. Uh, uh, looking forward to this. We're not going to pretend for a moment that we're the authority on rondels or uh, Kreisgraben and Lagen is, uh, uh, is the proper German word. And I think I'll only use that if I'm, sh if I'm showing off. Um, even then, I'm probably pr pronouncing it wrong, and it will be pointed out to me. Well, some but, people call uh, them roundels as well. It's another permissible name, but rondels seems to be the uh, the consensus, isn't it? <laughs> let's stick to rondels. Why talk about rondels? Well, you know, somebody's got to do it, um, and <laughs> I think you know the fact that I just mentioned that they're largely unknown outside of uh, Central Europe, and they're hugely important. And also, from our point of view, <clears throat> we've come across them, you know, in the process of the Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge podcast. And in that story, in this, that middle bit of Central Europe, as the farmers are going across here, across there, if we can understand what rondels are about, what they are for, then it's a huge cultural insight. It, or insight into the culture of the linear band ceramic and the subsequent um, uh, cultures thereafter that, uh, that that came after, crucial to understanding what folk uh, folk were about, in our humble um, uh, opinion. So yeah, go back to the Stonehenge podcast. Those of you in the know will know that Rupert and I are producing a series of films that knits together the whole story of the Neolithic ray from Anatolia uh, uh, and crossing over into Greece and up the Danube and across the Mediterranean and up through France and 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 Spain and uh, eventually, of course, uh, over the Channel. <laughs> and uh, into Britain and ending up on the Wiltshire Plain at Stonehenge. Indeed. In a, what were in we a thinking? In a nutshell, what were well we done. thinking? <laughs> well, yeah. um, uh, and before we go any further, two things. Um, if you can find a way to uh, supporting the Gobekli Tepe to Stonehenge project, uh, do click on the uh, Buy Me A Coffee link in the description below where you can find out how you can support that. Next year we've got lots of filming to do and need your support. We'd be gr most grateful for it. If, on the other hand, you want sort of more a continuous sort of background of what we're up to and to uh, support us on a monthly basis, and, you know, keep this channel going because that's what it does, um, do consider joining us on Patreon. Uh, link down below in the description. Actually, I said two things, three three things. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, we're aiming yeah. for. Um, we're, where, where are we at? We're near, we're over the uh, ninety thousand subscribers, uh, are we? Not quite. We're we're just grazing ninety thousand. We just. <laughs> Okay, but you know when we get to a hundred thousand, we get the lovely plaque from from YouTube, the silver <laughs> plaque, and I'll yes, be able to do. put it on the bookcase behind me. <laughs> uh, you know, or you can, or, you know, you, we could share it. <laughs> oh, I, I think it should sit at the uh, at the online <laughs> studio end. So it seems only fair that it's on the bookshelf behind you. Yes, fair enough. Yes, <laughs> no. I, in in the world of looking good, it's very important that the prehistory <laughs> guys get the YouTube silver plaque for achieving a hundred thousand uh, yes. uh, subscribers. So if you yes. can help us get to that in uh, the next few months, I don't uh, think and, we'll get there before, before you, Christmas. Uh, well, before you move on, though, I just would point out to, talking about Patreon that for uh, for uh, those of you that don't know. There is a ton of stuff on uh, our Patreon uh, page, for want of a better word, uh, that is just for uh, patrons. It's produced specifically for patrons. Oh, sure, so yeah, if you, yeah. If you like what we do, then there's a ton more stuff on there that is only available uh, yeah. on Patreon. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's an almost four-year archive. That is true. And we've true. been producing stuff specifically for Patreon every week. So, yeah. As you, so you, yeah. You can yeah. do the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot there. Yeah. Mm. Well, it costs five dollars a month. 
it's, it's a yeah, no-brainer, bargain. really, isn't it? Bargain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of the sales talk. Um, yeah. Rondles. Rondles. What is a rondel? What, in your wow. view, is a rondel? Because um, uh, we've got to describe it, it. You know, we've got to yes. we've got to paint a picture here first yes. before we uh, get into well, the for, deep for stuff. For those of you who uh, who get the terminology anyway, it's a hengiform structure, not a henge, <laughs> hengiform. It's um, a, a cir- usually circular, more or less circular uh, mm. enclosure, uh, surrounded by ditches, maybe banks, not always. Uh, but they tend to have ditches on the outside. It could be one, two, three, four. There's even some that have got more than that. And, and there are uh, two some of them have got more than that. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> there are two that have got more than that. Two. No, so, no. Two Sorry, no. I interrupted. Yes. Yes. Um, and, uh, and sometimes they have inner trenches as well, which is an interesting feature. Um and the interesting thing is we don't know exactly what they are um but they often have settlement areas can't say always because they haven't always been excavated but they have settlements around them rather than within them uh yeah. so I, I i think that's a that's a fair nutshell description isn't it yes yeah, so the german the kreisgraben and lagen is actually very helpful because that means circular ditched enclosure yeah and that's that you know, is it uh, in a nutshell? <laughs> um, yes. But I think, you know, the basic form you've described, the inner trenches, and I think this is a, a word thing, um, the inner trenches I am reading are usually the foundations for the inner palisades. But it's a maybe. It's a it's a not always though, isn't it? Because uh, there's uh, some of them uh, that the infill. Uh, are we are we getting into this a little too soon? Um, maybe <laughs> maybe so. But I think it's important. You know, seeing as we've got no visuals, as being a, a podcast and, and yeah. all that. You know, trying to paint the picture as best we can. It, you know, mm. that the, the interior uh, area is usually encircled by uh, a. a, a a, a palisaded, you know, is usually a palisaded um, enclosure. Yes. Sometimes two rings of palisades, you know, of yes. upright posts in tight formation, you know, no mm. gaps apart from the entrances and the en- entrances. Mm. I think that's the other thing worth mentioning that <clears throat> there's uh, at least two entrances. There's no such thing as a rondel with only one entrance. They always have two. Mm. Uh, most have three. Uh, some have four, some have slightly more, I think. Uh, but the uh, the median is is three, <laughs> uh, yeah. three entrances, and and the the entrances uh, cross whatever ditch, you know, and the ditches are pretty deep. You know they're substantial. They're not, uh, uh, you know they're not they're not for um, growing cabbages in. They <laughs> no, no, it's but, interesting you know, though. Uh, these these because, are preventative measures. These ditches, uh, uh, although they're they're not henge ditch deep. No, oh, but so they're it, severe in terms yes, of and they're very yeah, they yeah. v- tend to be V shaped. Um, yes, um, but they're all, where the entrances are. There's always a causeway across uh, mm. the, the the ditch. And there's also a gap in the inner palisade where the entrances. The entrances always line up from the you know outside the ditch through the causeway into the uh, the, the palisade inside. They always line up as if there was a kind of path there. Once upon a time, yes, um, interesting that uh, that some of them uh, though there isn't a direct path to the uh, to the inner area. Uh, which is intriguing because that's almost as if there is uh, deliberately no way that you can run from the outside straight to the centre. Um, that was oh, uh, I was a, thinking a, quite the opposite. In what uh, 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 is it, uh, Zhenice? I oh, I'd need to look in my. It might be Vochov, uh, but there's uh, there's certainly a couple. Where... Oh, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and yes, you you do have to wonder, really. Outlier. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we mustn't give the impression that that is, you know, uh, that that, uh, um, that, that uh, that's the that's usually the the case, or, or that there's a large number of that case. The vast you know, majority I th- I think, have clear uh, I think there's, there's line of sight that, to the centre. There's something that we should uh, say, you know, right at the get go, and it, that applies to every aspect of uh, mm. you know of mm. archaeology that you could ever think about. That that y- when it comes down to fine detail, you are talking about people. So if if you find a site that is somehow different then it might just be because a group of people just wanted to do it differently for what it just could be the slightest tiniest personal reason absolutely uh, yeah and uh, so you know we we shouldn't always look for great symbolism within uh, within something it might just be foibles of people I think there's another aspect of Rondel's that uh, we can, we'll come back to that, the foibles of, uh, mm. uh, of men about uh, and uh, how anomalies um, you know, don't necessarily uh, tell you a story. Anyway, um, so that's a rough description of physical... Oh, uh, size. Um, oh, have you got a number, a, a diameter... They- Th- they can vary hugely. From 30 to 240 metres in diameter. Yeah, there you go. I mean, 30 metres, <clears throat> just that's a staggering difference, isn't it? That's yeah. a bit like um, the... the <laughs> it's a bit like comparing the, the, the tiniest two-up, two-down house with Buckingham yeah. Palace. Yeah, so uh, a, a big range in, uh, yeah. in size. Another thing worth pointing out is that uh, none of them are visible uh, at ground level today mm. unless they've been restored or uh, what have you. M- the vast majority of the rondels have been discovered by aerial photography or by ground penetrating uh, radar. Mm. Um, th- it's only the, re- the effect of the um, ditches, the circular ditches, that shows up in in crops and grass mm. that have uh, um, <clears throat> re- revealed their um, ubiquity uh, to archaeologists and the and Indeed. the rest of us. Mm. So, talking of ubiquity, um, do we know exactly how many have been discovered in Central um, Europe, up the Danube and the Elbe? I can't um, remember the numbers. Do you remember the number? I can, I can tell you. I over th- the, it's over one hundred and fifty. If you look on Wikipedia, I think it's sort of below 150, but I think there's even been discoveries since <laughs> uh, right. the, the, the current Wikipedia entry. Well, we do yeah. know in terms of modern country boundaries, if you want to look at it that way, then uh, yeah. you're talking about Germany, Poland, Slovakia, Czech Republic, Hungary, Austria, you know, throughout that massive, massive region. Yeah. It, did you yes. say Poland? Yeah. I did say probably Poland. probably did. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Something we haven't uh, said, actually, uh, you know, yeah. in the kind of the the general overview, is we're talking about a very specific band in uh, in prehistory here. You know, in time, the, the, indeed, the, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's you know we are talking about only between say f- uh, four and a half and five thousand BC. You could probably refine it more than that, actually. But, yeah, um, four nine because uh, Gossek, which is the earliest, uh, mm. which is in Germany, the earliest known. I should yeah. say, it is yeah, dated to yeah. four thousand nine hundred yeah. uh, BC. So we are only um, talking about you know a few hundred years, really. Yeah. Um, and I I find those kinds of details quite compelling as well. You know, what is it that makes people start doing something and then stop doing something? It's you know what makes something cease to be relevant for people. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to think now if there's anything that we've missed out, you know, of the broad brushstroke of, of painting the picture. I mentioned the Danube and the Elbe. Uh, in terms of, you know, chronology, it, it is kind of thought that uh, they started off... Um, um, actually, that wouldn't make sense of Gothic. But anyway, 
uh, that started off in the you know, lower Danube and, and spread uh, west and north up the, uh, up the Elbe. And if you look at a map of <clears throat> known, it's always a good, good idea to <laughs> use the word known, known yes. uh, Rondel's cluster you know, in, uh, in the plains of the Danube and the, uh, and the Elbe. Um, in three or four sort of uh, uh, centres. Um, I think one of the big clusters is in uh, Lower Austria, uh, just north of, uh, of Vienna uh, mm-hmm. there. You know, I was privileged enough to, to be there a, week, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, that's inspired a lot of my thought about it. But as far as about them, as far as the broad brushstroke, uh, are we really missing anything out here? Um, the broad brushstroke, I'd say no. I th- no. Say yeah. Uh, as I say, don't come to us, you know, because we're we're not the experts. And uh, and most published material about rondels, of course, is in a language that is not English. Mm. <laughs> Um, and put it that way, we're depending largely on one large book called uh, Big Men or Chiefs, <laughs> which is quite a comprehensive uh, uh, book, but uh, it's one of the very few in English that uh, gives a comprehensive overview yeah. uh, of the phenomena of uh, Rondels or Kresk or Aben and Nagen. So, uh, where, how many? We've done that. Basic description, dimensions. Um, <clears throat> the amount of excavation that has gone on recently uh, and the studies that have gone on have been quite comprehensive. I mean, they do get paid a lot of attention in Germany and, uh, and in Austria uh, because, you know, like our henges in, in Britain, uh, are very, very uh, prominent and now uh, quite well-known part of people's cultural uh, heritage. And there are a number that have been recreated as tourist centres. Uh, the one I went to in uh, Heldenberg, uh, which is a recreation of the Rondel at Schletz. Uh, Gossek has been recreated. Rupert, I'm going to ask you. you I know the answer to this. Yes. Pardon? <laughs> reconstructed. Um, reconstructed. Did I say something else? Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, uh, when did you first become aware of the fact on the continent of hengiform structures called Kreisgraben and Lagen? Or it- well, I've got to be honest, when I first uh, became aware of them, I had no idea that they were called Kreisgraben and Lagen at all. Well, no, just, but you wouldn't, uh, would you? I was looking at uh, rondels and roundels. Um, and the honest truth is, I I can't remember exactly when it, it was. It was years ago when we well, were looking for. Uh, well, it was after Standing with Stones, and we were looking at uh, potentially doing a sequel and seeing that that you know, okay, they're divided in time. They don't fall in the same time. But we were looking. There was for one specifically hinges. that we came across that blew our mind. Pomelta. Pomelta. Yeah. Now, um, and there's the strange thing, because that's ironic, because Pamelta, although it is a circular ditched enclosure with your palisades and your ditches and all the rest of it, it's blooming Bronze Age. It's yeah. actually after Stonehenge. Yeah. By quite, yeah. you know, by a couple of hundred uh, years, if the dating is right. Yeah. So, there's a, you've got to backtrack and think, well, with the, <laughs> there's a massive time gap between 4,500 and uh, uh, 2,003, 2,200, which which is when Pomelta, uh, I should say Pomelta is in uh, Germany, which is it near, nearest Munich? I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. It's definitely in Germany. probably wrong. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, it's definitely Germany, yes. I think, yes, I think it's (laughs) towards the north. Do you know, in, in it, it, it's worth mentioning, because this is something that niggles me, not just because of my own ignorance, but because uh, whilst rondels have been known about for quite a long time, yeah. up until 
I think it's around uh, 2000. Since the late 19th century, by the way, right. were the first ones. Um, that were but excavated. up until, I think it's 2008, uh, so it's really recent, but up until then, only five had been excavated. Wow. Um, uh, so, so everything <clears throat> that we know, you know, solidly know <clears throat> from an archaeological point of view, is very new. And I'm really bewildered by the fact that uh, so you know it's good you, you mentioned uh, Pomelta there that um, that it's so late in comparison with the others but then we do know that others uh, like is it Vochok I think where the um, uh, even Roman uh, uh, rubbish has been excavated I say rubbish I'm sorry um, but you know bits of pottery or what have you deposits. Uh, so there's uh, so in fact there's more than one site where um, where bronze bronze age and Roman artifacts have been found. So the sure. implication is that these places were were still in use in one way or another. Yeah, but um, Stonehenge is still in use in one way or another. So that's true. But would you be going yeah. to a uh, a causewayed enclosure for a picnic. You can understand why people would have gone to Stonehenge for yeah, a picnic. Fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do find that aspect, the fact that they are even finding Iron Age stuff uh, in some of these places, I find mm. that really curious. What's, you know, yeah, what is without the knowing this on? papers, without knowing the studies, without knowing the context for those, it's very difficult to put any kind of meaning yeah. uh, uh, on that. It's it's very um, difficult, but it's uh, but mm, you know it's mm. the, it's the sort of uh, detail that that you have to even if you can't explain it in any way, you do have to you know peg it there and say well, we just can't ignore that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, th I thought it was just it was interesting that there is this anomaly, Pomelta, and it's yeah, famous. Yeah. Uh, you know, certainly in in Germany, and if you type in uh, P O M M E L T E into Google, you'll get some <laughs> fantastic images. Uh, yeah, you know, of of the place. Um, so that's got a visitor centre attached to it. You know, and it's. Uh, uh, a well-known tourist site uh, in Germany. Actually, I don't think Gossek is too far away from Pomelta. Then again, no, I, think, I may I think be you're wrong. Right. Like, that, uh, no, I, I think you're right. I don't think they're far from each other, but um, but Gossek yeah. is... What's the time <clears throat> Not far in between? distance, but uh, yeah. the time gap, gee. Huge. Well, uh, Gossek is 4,900. It's supposed to yeah. be the oldest yeah. uh, that uh, is, is known. So yeah. that's... Um, yeah. What were they for, though? You see, this is the thing. This is the elephant in in the room. It's all very mm. well having a, a monument, but then we come up, come up, you know, like a brick wall. Uh, we come to what were the the purpose of them? Mm. I think just to backtrack a little, I would say that a rondel e is that rondels are associated with settlements. In other words, we should in our minds put the settlement that they're associated with first. It's not rondel first and then a settlement round it. There are settlements that don't have rondels, and that is what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you don't get rondels without settlements. Mm. Um, so they're always attached to where people are living. Very important aspect. <clears throat> Mm. Uh, to keep in mind um, so, uh, going forward. But the question is, uh, you know, and people have been struggling this with, as they have with you know, anything. <laughs> Most what? things Neolithic and circular <laughs> are more than uh, 2,000, uh, more than 4,000 years old. It's yeah. a problem. Um but with so many of them, it's it's tantalising, you know, and their association with settlements, the, the their raison d'etre, their, their their purpose is a very tantalising one because it's one of those things you should be. We feel we should be able to, we should be able to work out. Um, interestingly, if you go on Wikipedia and do a search for rondels, so they've got a whole thing about circular ditch in in enclosures it's not a long entry in uh, wikipedia 
uh, for Rondles, and it spends a th- reasonable chunk of what's there discussing the purpose, and it completely focuses, the English Wikipedia, I should say, English Wikipedia completely focuses on the, um, um, uh, uh, on, on the cultic, that's the word, cultic, <laughs> reasons that there, it may be there. It's, it's all about... Um, yes. Um, yeah, ritual. That's the word I was seeing. <laughs> it's not often we have to search for the word ritual. <laughs> you go, go rich for the Listerine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, English Wikipedia emphasises the cultic purposes and, <laughs> you know... Uh, uh, and and the perhaps archo archo astronomical uh, possibilities uh, of them, it does not mention any kind of uh, uh, practical aspect that there may have been to them, which is um, uh, fascinating. And I would have thought that needs updating in in the light of <laughs> you know uh, of uh, you know most of the theories that have been put forward. You know that that's the trouble. There are many theories, and no one really stands out. That, mm. That's the thing. There's so many of them. Um, it's that they are that their layout is quite plain to see, and the fact that they're associated with uh, settlements. It's one of those things you really feel you ought to be able to work this one out. <laughs> What do you feel about the, you know, the, uh, the the cultic aspect? You know, like every settlement needs a church, for example. You know, you know. yeah. Uh, I have to say, in in this context, Rondles, I'm talking about Rondles specifically. It, it's one mm. of the few co- uh, contexts where I I have less resistance, if you like, to uh, to uh, the religious. Uh, side of things because you can see so much evidence of uh, of settlement uh, around the rondels uh, sometimes really very extensive uh, settlement areas so the, so the rondel is clearly something that's important um, at the heart of the community um, to put it uh, it's not always in the heart but but you know what I mean in terms yeah. of importance um, I I don't, f- I don't feel, and I can't really put my finger on why. It's not just my personal resistance to calling things temples and what have you. I, I can't say why that doesn't quite sit comfortably with me. I think it's because there are, there are so many aspects within their structure. Um, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, the ditches, for example. Um, now, we've talked many times in in different. Uh, Context about uh, how we think a lot of these structures are to do with livestock and keeping your animals safe. Um, you know, if not from uh, from the predators that are uh, wandering around, whether it's wolves or bears or whatever, um, but from cattle rustling that we know from Irish <laughs> archaeology that cattle rustling was a huge thing. If you've got a lot of animals, yeah. they're very valuable and people will come and steal them. So having ditched enclosures uh, is a very good reason, you know, if you're keeping your animals safe, that there's a very good reason for that. But there's something about the, um, uh, the, the palisaded uh, constructions uh, and the way that they've been put together, that doesn't feel right either. No. It's, um, so it, it's very two, difficult. Two belt and braces, isn't it? As a yeah, solution yeah, and also there there are a couple of instances, and I can't think of the names of the sites off the top of my head, but there are a couple of um, uh, rondels where they have shown that uh, that where you mentioned um, earlier on, but so uh, ditches for the palisaded posts to um, uh, to be um, erected within. Um, and there are a couple of places where there appear to have been timber structures on the inside of that that could have been viewing levels so that people could see in or out, depending on uh, which way you imagine that being constructed. Um, 
And if that's the case, oh, I don't know. I mean, you could still be having a lookout for protecting your animals, but I don't know. I, I, I have to flag it as a big, I don't know. There are so many possibilities Well, exactly. I mean, the, the it's uh, over-the-top belt and braces. As soon as you start mm. adding in extra ditches on the outside, yeah. at what yeah. point do you need more than one ditch to perform you know, that the, the, duty? I did wonder, and uh, and there is you know, oh, there By is the way, no... just be... Sorry, sorry to get, uh, when we're talking about these ditches, they are uh, severe, like I said. They are three metres to six metres deep and V-shaped. Uh, if you fall oh, into Oh, okay. I didn't get. I didn't read of any that deep. Yeah. At all. I. That's mm -hmm. why I was saying that they weren't hinge deep. Uh, hinge ditch deep. Oh, Most no, of the they... ones that I was reading about were only two, two, three meters max. Well, a few weeks ago, I was standing next to one. Okay, that had been reproduced to the depth of. And this is a small rondel. Okay, that had been reproduced to to the depth. If I jumped into that. I'd have severe difficulty getting back out again. And I would have been in over my head to at least a metre. And standing, you know, in the bottom of a V-shaped ditch. So, yes. Okay, I'm that's not really exaggerating, calling them uh, severe. Because uh, the, the ones that I was looking at specifically... OK, well, in, in that case, this flags up uh, another important factor then. Because the the... The ones that I've been reading specific details about, that there were ditches that were uh, that were, you know, a couple of meters deep, um, uh, and so that makes you question function again. Uh, mm. You know that you you could say if something is three meters deep, yeah. then clearly you can see that as being defensive. If it's uh, if it's only one or two meters deep, then mm. that's not really defensive. What I was going to say before you uh, you said that, um, which, you know, again, it just shows how confusing this can potentially be, is that I did wonder, with some of the potential shallowness of some of these ditches, is oh. if they were, um, if they had f floorboards, pardon me, but, you know, if they had wood panels, wood floor that stretched across the ditches, that it could be that this is drainage, this is so that you can just scrape all your uh, your rubbish away to keep things clear, particularly if you don't want water building up, you know, that you can just sweep all your detritus away. Um, it's just another... I couldn't see a rationale for shallow ditches of that sort. No. I, I, my impression is that uh, mostly they're, they're very intentionally... Uh, deep and a lot of work to achieve. Do you remember when I was there, Rupert, and, and I, uh, I, I sort of, uh, I, I, I don't know if I, I don't speak to you directly from there, but I m made a recording on on my phone, and I remember conveying that uh, my impression standing there at this recreation uh, reproduction of uh, Schlett's uh, Randall. Yeah. Um, now it has to be said that they did it, they've done it as accurately as they could. It's based on the archaeological excavation, and not only that, it was made using um, uh, uh, implements uh, and tools, um, uh, uh, um, replicas of implements and tools from the Neolithic. I.e., there was no metal involved. <laughs> they yes. did do it with. Uh, 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 yeah, flint axes and adzes and uh, antler picks, uh, which uh, hats off to the the archaeologists and and uh, whoever was responsible for the working of that. But <laughs> standing there next to it, even though this was a relatively small one, uh, it, the overwhelming impression is that this is to prevent people getting in. It's, I, I said that, you know, the, my impression is that this is absolutely defensive. Why go to all that trouble mm. uh, otherwise? And, That's a and subjective think, thing, you know, but, you know, knowing how much people are willing to work, you know, why do that much work if it's... You know, uh, yeah, if, if, yeah, yeah. But I, I do think this is an important point, though, because we we give the impression that we're we're trying to find 
a single use you know the, the, there's yes. one reason for Mistake. people having made these things <laughs> probably um yeah uh, and and clearly that's not the case you know that if you've got something that's uh, 30 meters across as opposed to 240 meters across clearly they don't yeah. serve the same purpose and yeah. and if you have something with a you know with a, a five foot ditch uh, or you know a, a, a one and a half two meter ditch or a three or four meter ditch clearly they don't serve the same the the, the same function either and and i think it, it it might not be a silly analogy to say you know if you look at all our buildings today that are square uh, you know, we we do make square buildings, and you look at the different usages. Uh, you know, whether it's a chemist's shop, uh, you know, a pharmacy or a public toilet. You know, it's um, they're all square. Uh, um, uh, we must compare notes on the uh, relative uh, depth of ditches and where they are, they occur, and with what frequency, yes. Rupert. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. <clears throat> you've been reading something that I haven't. Of. Uh, do you know? I, I have to say that uh, that it's an aspect of this subject that I have found the hardest to actually. Uh, I mean, normally you can read stuff, you can research stuff, you can go and look at something on the ground, and you get very clear images in your head of how things uh, actually yeah. uh, appeared. And I've found all my research on rondels specifically, that I have just been left with question mark after question mark <laughs> because there seems to be no commonality other than they are round and they have ditches. Um, that, uh, and they have entrances. And entrances, yes. In, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and in fact, talk, do you know what? There's one of them that, that um, was... Uh, it's actually been described by the archaeologists as maze-like. Because the offset between the entrance and uh, and the ditches, so the causewayed aspect, if you like, is deliberately mm. offset in a number of uh, of sections, so you cannot go from the outside to the inside. Well, wow, wow, be because your course. I, I've seen no end of planned plans of uh, mm. rondels. I have not seen one like that where the where the entrances are offset. Yeah. Uh, do you know, I, 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 that sounds is, more like a causeway enclosure, which we come across uh, later when we get to um, later, the yeah. British yeah. Uh, uh, Isles um, and Ireland. But it's, it um, is one of the real um, benefits, <laughs> possibly not for you listeners, but uh, one of the real <laughs> benefits of you and I uh, researching independently, because invariably we both pick yeah. up different things from different sources – where yes. <laughs> if we had been looking at exactly the same things, we we might yeah. have missed something it's... entirely. But it does, it just underscores this aspect of there being no yeah. single purpose. That's right. Oh, two metres deep? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> where did you yeah. read that? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, no, it, it is. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. Um, yeah. it's, it's a great shame that, um, that a lot of this research is in almost... Uh, impenetrable tables you know and uh, <laughs> you try to make sense of the tables and the variance of uh, of data mm. um mm. yes uh, time is not on our side for you know, studying tables and extrapolating uh, information no. from them is it no, no. Uh, if i had more faith in artificial intelligence then i'd ask it to give me a a, a synopsis of things, yeah. but I, I, I don't trust it enough yet. It, yeah, what's happened to our strap line? We dig deeper so you don't have to. <laughs> well, it doesn't quite work if we. It doesn't quite work if we go. We we dig a little bit deeper, so yeah. You know, well, in like terms that. of rondels, you got down to four meters, and I'm still struggling at two. But um, yeah. Uh, no, I, I read it. I read it somewhere, and I wish I could quote it. Uh, so, but it. You know, the median seems to be, uh, I saw three to six uh, metres. But, you know, six metres is a lot. Anyway. Uh, six metres is huge. Huge. Yeah. And that may be, of course, an extreme. Um, entrances, though, and and or exits or paths through, mm. whatever. Now, mm. we haven't really touched upon, because one theory is... Of course, well, it's not a theory. 
but it's a it's a question mark, uh, and people uh, have been um, very willing to say because they tend to have entrances pointing down to the north, uh, sorry, to the southeast and to the south west. Hmm. That there's an archaeological, uh, archaeoastronomical uh, thing going on here. Um, which is a fair thing to try to e examine. But, and some people have tried to make it precise, you know, and align things on precise elements of the uh, night sky um, and have uh, declared, oh, it's, I mean, that was the interesting thing. I mean, they s said it in Wikipedia that they, uh, most likely, they are... Um, um, what's the word for some... Uh, observatories, that's the word. Mm. And I... I could, yes, there may be... There may be point vaguely at this way or that way, but to call a place observatory, you know, I'll yeah. uh, just pop, pop in to, up to the observatory, dear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aren't we lucky to have observatories? Just, you know... Yeah. 20 yards away. No. Yeah. You, you, yeah. No. <laughs> Do you know, it, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because, uh, and it's something that, n not specific to rondels, it's something that applies to all sorts of areas where sites are, you know, they're, they're clearly constructed with a reference to a solstice yeah. sunrise or sunset or what have you. Mm. But as we have said many times before, you know, that, uh, that you look at, uh, churches being constructed aligned east-west when there is nothing in mm. the faith, if you like, Christian churches, there's nothing in the faith that mm. uh, uh, that relates to that characteristic. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that sometimes you can have a convention that that it doesn't really have a profound ritual aspect. You know, it's, uh, it's a nod it's to a something somewhere. Um, yeah. And sometimes it might be, it might be as simple as if you're talking about a people, who, you know, you live with the with the day and night cycles, and so to acknowledge the earliest rising of the sun, uh, you know, or or the setting of the sun, what have you, and that can make complete sense from a pure, you know, daily life point of view, not. Uh, not necessarily a ritualistic one. Um, oh, it, it, it's so easy to forget this thing that their relationship to the cosmos, to the to the sky, and to the movement of of the heavens would be so much more profound than ours is because yeah. we're just not conscious of it. No. But they're they're going to be conscious of it on a, on a on a daily basis, mm. you know. And my my aspect my attitude to this is yeah, as you were just saying things would be aligned to uh, things going on in the heavens, specifically the sun, maybe the, the, the moon and certain things, because it would be rude not to. <laughs> yeah. I'm not being facetious. Yeah. It's like, I belong here, this is, you know, <laughs> of course I'd acknowledge, you know, I want the su the early morning's rays to... Yeah. come in through that gate or I want the late evening sun to shine in through that one yeah. it's a sort of well duh si uh, situation if you're, it, if you're it, also you know, it's something that we, we take so much for granted with uh, all the scientific knowledge that we have today that we we know that the earth is round and that it and that it spins you know if uh it, if you you're going back then you're thinking about a people who well, they didn't know the earth was round or that it was spinning as far as they were concerned this big ball of fire in the sky that kept them warm and gave them light disappeared yeah. every day and you would yeah had a mind of its own you know. when it came back <laughs> um, so you can quite see why they would have uh, attributed a great importance to uh, to that yeah yeah, it has to be said in in passing that um, generally speaking, uh, that the entrances and exits, you know, if there are f uh, four entrances, call them all entrances, uh, for want of a better 
way of putting it, they do tend to be oriented on the cardinal points, north, south, mm. east, west. Yeah, which and that's is interesting as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, on what are the other... Um, um, yeah, we touched on cattle enclosure possibility, social gathering space. Well, of, of you know, kind of. Well, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> We've mentioned the defensive thing, and of course, it's not just protecting cattle. I'm afraid, you know, you, you have to uh, protect protect your, uh, something we haven't touched upon, and that is that uh, violence was a thing, mm -hmm. um, raiding was a thing, uh, and it seems. But sadly, the massacres were a thing. I'm afraid to say that, that the Schletz, the uh, model for the uh, recreation at, uh, at Heldenberg, that uh, over 200 uh, remains of over 200 people were found in the, the staggering, ditch. staggering, isn't it? There, yeah. Um, blunt force trauma being the cause of their demise. And... Mm. Um, Schletz is not alone. Uh, I think in earlier ditched enclosures, uh, uh, what's the, the other um, so-called massacre sites uh, from the linear band ceramic? Uh, one of them, I think, is another uh, rondel somewhere else. So stuff was going on. So uh, what I'm saying is, may have been an imperative to. Um, Make sure you do your best to protect your cattle and your wives yeah. and daughters, yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, to prevent this stuff happening. Mm. A deterrent, mm. yeah, not a preventative. I would, <laughs> that's mm. the, I, I think that, that's the best way you could, uh, you could put it. Um, you know, having that ability is, is definitely, uh, uh, yeah, to, will make uh, assailants and raiders think twice mm. if you've got a good rondel, and that may not have been the purpose. Don't know. Maybe you know the maybe the fact that uh, you've got a defensive structure was was secondary to something else. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, mm. Are there any other sort of uh, purposes to rondels that uh, we haven't touched upon that is in the common? Well, do you know, I, I, there's an interesting um, uh, feature, feature, is that the word, uh, a site called um, Vinice, where uh, something that um, uh, shouted out to me from the uh, excavations there was uh, that, uh, that in uh, the... Uh, in the ditch there, or they um, in the daub fragmented layer, they called it. There were imprints of wood, which was sometimes chiselled, and there were wicker constructions as well. Mm. Um, now, that it's just little details like that. You know, evidence of wood. Okay, well that's not a surprise, but the fact that chiselled. Okay, um, you know, again that. That gives you a different picture straight away of uh, you know of what sort of carpentry, if you like, was going on. Uh, and, uh, yes, well, you're t talking of shaped carpentry. That is a feature of many of them. Mm. Um, that single uh, single timber posts uh, are often carved well, mm. from the evidence of the post holes. That they were carved square or split. Yeah. You know, so there's a uh, you know. Uh, what purpose would they be? That's why I think is some in re some uh, recreating the visuals of them. Uh, archaeologists have been emboldened to put the uh, lintels across um, yeah. to honour yeah. the obvious d deliberate structural thing of, of a square post as opposed mm. to just the raw circular yeah. um, tr tree trunk. Well, also the the fact that that you know we have talked not in the context of rondels, but we have talked so many times about the missing horizontals. You know that yeah. we look at all manner of prehistoric sites that uh, you know, and say if it's a stone circle, for example, that we have no idea what horizontal timber structures there might have been in association with these sites. 
So to uh, to be seeing that evidence of wicker constructions uh, are, uh, are found in these uh, sites as well is interesting because wicker, mm. uh, you know, <laughs> kind of by its very nature, you would say, would, uh, uh, would it, you know, it's not defensive, is it? It's, uh, you know, it, it's forming partitions, but yes. um, uh, that's the point, isn't it? I think if we could see all the wicker, we'd know what they were for. I think that's probably And that fair. goes for anywhere. That goes for any round <laughs> stone <Yeah>. circle, <laughs> you name it. Stonehenge, if we could see the wicker, yeah. we'd be able to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. work it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, just to go back to the astronomical thing from a, a point of view, the, the, mm. the, apparently there's one guy, uh, it's an astronomer called uh, Georg Zotti, uh, who right. did a study of all the astronomical alignments of the, well, I think he, his sample was 30 of, of the, the rondels, and he decided there's, there's no astronomical consistency between rondels, between the rondel systems at all. Mm-hmm interestingly you know because there's an accuracy thing yeah. <laughs> yeah where do you decide where where the central point is where you're going to stand to establish whether that's aligned in in that direction or not what he did say was that the uh, that the entrances that seemed to align were actually they tended to be on the downslope like rondels have always constructed on a slight down slope and one or other of the entrances goes down that slope that's uh, statistically what he seems to find he says gates tend to follow the slope of the terrain interesting so i'm thinking okay so were rondels always built on the southern flanks of of hills mm. needs more I investigation yeah. don't know yeah <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, I so think in the northern hemisphere, if you want to, uh, if you want to be pointing it at sunrise and sunset, then you want to be looking broadly south, don't you? So, uh, yeah, that yeah, would, that yeah. would make some sense. And also, it gives you more light during the day. You know, if yeah. that's an important thing. Um, yeah, I have to say, um, it's, it's worth mentioning. I'm not going to sell it, you know, right now. But um, we're examining the possibility that these, because they have these entrances and, and exits, never less uh, than two, never one entrance, and that they tend to align, you know, uh, that, that there seems to be a straight path through the whole structure, mm -hmm. not obstructed uh, by by anything that these were built mm. on the uh, paths, that these were built on the roads that uh, existed uh, in the early Neolithic, on the middle Neolithic in Central Central Europe. So uh, it just made me think, oh, maybe these were stopping off points, maybe um, these were early 5th uh, millennium caravanserai. Mm. Um, uh, maybe you know that these uh, settlements were being so successful in the Danube and up the Elbe, and uh, that you needed a network, a, a network system where caravans, traders, could travel safely. Um, a caravanserai. Uh, you know, we're thinking, we're talking Silk Road and that kind of thing were yeah. places where traveling you know, people carrying goods, whose job it was to carry uh, goods, whose life it was to, to carry goods, could find refuge. And that may have been an element of mm. uh, the Rondel, you know, refuge for people, bands of, of people traveling. Uh, that would otherwise be exposed. There's a there's a there's a win win situation there. That if you can attract a band of travellers or a caravanserai or a ca caravan of of traders, and these would be quite large groups uh, mm. carrying axe heads and 
um, uh, pottery from another uh, region, uh, raw materials, uh, you name it, uh, animals, of course. If you can attract them into your settlement and get them to stay for a while, there's an economic benefit to you. Yeah. Uh, a, being able to uh, exchange goods, um, you know, for, give something you've got surplus of, so it's something that you're lacking. Mm. And to have them stay for a bit, you know, uh, before they, they move on, maybe a rondel was an attractive thing. Mm. Uh, for, 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 you know, and the fact that it, it makes sense if you've got an, a, a rondel with three or four entrances, well, maybe they're on the crossroads <laughs> yeah. near the settlement. Yeah, I must admit, I do like the idea. Yeah, we, it, and it needs further sort of... Um, uh, yeah, look at, looking at to see what mm. fits with that and what doesn't. Mm. Uh, you know what what knocks it out of the park, maybe. Yeah, but, but I once like again, it too. you know, I, I I think it's very important that we don't lose sight of the fact that we must not try to uh, uh, to find a single use for all these things because uh, mm. That, mm. you know. So it might be that you know that whatever percentage of them were. Um, with trading places, caravans, right? Maybe, um, uh, but but what percentage? You know, I don't think we should yeah. uh, throw the idea away just because another site um, contradicts the, the possibility. Mm. I mean, certainly. Mm. Do you know what there was uh, one of them? Oh God, was it Janice again? Um, but the amount of animals that were found, animal remains, both wild and domestic, I found <coughs> that interesting. That um, that they found in one site. Uh, there were, uh, on the wild animal side, there was red deer, roe deer, wild boar, hare and grouse. And on the domestic yeah. side, there were domestic cattle, sheep, goat and pig. And this yeah. is at one site. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> so clearly both wild and domestic animals are of you know, major significance. Mm -hmm. A uh, slightly different topic, but um, I, I was surprised, and I think uh, archaeologists have been surprised uh, by the uh, balance between wild and, and domestic, mm. suggesting that these people were still hunting an awful lot. Yeah, uh, Domestic farms they may have been, but boy, were they still going out and, uh, mm. yeah. Uh, <coughs> and uh, hunting. Uh, an awful lot and you know across a broad spectrum of species as well still you know, yeah it was important yeah. to them from a subsistence point of view yeah it'll be interesting to see what comes out you know as, as uh, excavations and lab tests go on in the you know in the coming years um, because you know on, on that subject specifically you know if you've got uh, cow sheep and goat that you're keeping mm. domestically then mm. Um, you know, if you're making cheese, then you don't want to be killing those animals, particularly if you're getting mm. wool from the sheep as well. You don't want to be killing those animals. So maybe they're eating the wild animals and, um, uh, you know, and using the uh, the domestic animals for secondary product, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Listen, I think we're almost done. I think we've spilled as much as we can, uh, you know, out of our brains that's retained there uh, as, as far as Rondles is concerned. Obviously, mm. there's a huge amount of uh, detail uh, to be uh, gone into, but I think yeah. we've, uh, we've, we've done a better job than uh, Wikipedia will do you <laughs> as, uh, uh, yeah. as a discussion of them. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, tick VG for us on, on that. <laughs> um, the, the other thing is, uh, you mentioned right at the top, you know, there's a hengiform in, in mm. um, uh, structures. And it's just worth reiterating that there's a huge time gap, you know, from yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 4,500 BC yes. and to the time of, that uh, our hinges in Britain were being uh, constructed. Yes. It's uh, a funny term, isn't it? You know, that we should choose, <clears throat> it, we should choose almost the latest hengiform structure as as the thing that gives you the overriding term. It's uh, Yes, it's not, it's the wrong way around, is it yes. not? Yeah. Because, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that there's a, there's a, there's a showground 
uh, element to Henge's, we think anyway, yes. that is completely absent from uh, Rondel's. And we haven't discussed that. It's well, just worth wrapping up is yeah. that there is discussion about whether th there were whether there were banks and ditches. For mm. the most part, it seems no that there weren't. Although the recreation mm. at Gossack does seem to have a an enclosing yeah. uh, enclosing bank. Now yeah. whether that is uh, uh, whether that's uh, sprung out of somebody's imagination or not is another uh, thing. But well, no from, real evidence of uh, of banks. I think reliable. From what I've of read, the construction there of banks are at a minority of, of sites that show evidence <clears throat> for banks. Um, okay, but but nevertheless, there are a few, and yeah. I I think bearing in mind also what we said right at the beginning that. There's not percentage wise hardly any of these have been uh, fully excavated they're just uh, you know it's known where they are and yeah. uh, so you know whether uh, a greater percentage will show up in time as having had banks who knows um mm. uh, it's you know as you said when we were talking about um palisades earlier on that uh, we were talking about the trenches um and you said that um that that some of that uh, earthen structure was for supporting the uh, the timber posts, and it's quite possible mm. that if it was a you know lower uh, banks, well maybe they were revetments of uh, of sorts as as well. They might not have been banks for the same function as yeah. uh, the banks that we find at Henges. Uh, mm -hmm. It's there's there's not enough of a sample to uh, to say. I don't think certainly not from what I've read anyway. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Anyway, we hope that this brief overview of the uh, phenomenon of rondels in uh, Central Europe has whetted your appetite. Uh, the, as I said before, uh, there's a lot to go in. There's a lot of material to play with. You know, it's, it's a great playground uh, for the imagination. Mm. Um, and um, certainly I felt that at... Uh, Heldenberg, where not only have we got the recreation of the Rondel, but also the recreation of the village. I got a sense of community, you know, some kind of integration mm. between this Rondel and the community, uh, which was quite profound. And I was very lucky to be there to kind of experience it, seeing as there was nobody else there at the time as yes. well. <laughs> what um, a treat. Yeah, but I, I got a sense of village, you know, this completes the village. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, thanks for listening, stroke, uh, watching uh, to, to the end there. Hope you found that interesting. I hope that's, you know, uh, uh, whetted your appetite for further um, uh, investigations. Uh, I think that's about as much as I can say, Rupert. Are you spent as well, mate? I'm spent. I'm spent. I'm okay. Spent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll think of a hundred things that we didn't mention, but um, but yeah, as an overview, I think that's all right. Yeah. If you're still watching, stroke listening, uh, well done to you. Uh, hit the like and subscribe uh, if you're on YouTube. Help mm -hmm. us get to that uh, 1,000, 100,000 uh, subscriber mark. Uh, do have a look at the Gebekli Tepe to Stonehenge project website, buy me a coffee thing and we'd love to see you on patreon as well build that uh it, we've got a fantastic community on on patreon Our lovely brilliant yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, yeah there's that aspect of it as well yes enough said bye Thanks, folks from me <laughs> bye bye <laughs> do you know what i didn't think that was going to go on for uh it, i didn't think we'd reach the hour i didn't think we'd reach uh, the half hour i think that was all right <laughs> Um, oh, so many stats, Mike. So many stats. So many stats.